Okay, we're getting ready with the new head gaskets. Welcome back to What's Next Garage. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to be putting on the heads, the valve covers, and the water pump, and getting ready to do the timing. Stick around, here we go. Like I said before, it's hard to believe all that cross hatching is still visible. Um, you would think after all these miles that that would be gone. On the DOD delete I recently did that, on that GM, that didn't have cross hatching in it yet. Not saying it's good or bad, but it's just maybe testament to what they put for a liner. So this is gonna be the passenger side head, which is on the table here. There wasn't a lot of debris on the heads. It was mostly stained. I scraped off some dried up coolant that must have came through the head gasket, but otherwise it was very clean. Before I put the motor in, I'm gonna change the plugs because once the motor's in the vehicle, the plugs are really, really challenging. We'll put it on there and it, there's no front. I don't think, no, there's no front, no back. You just gotta make sure all the ports are lined up. All right, let's go back to the engine block. The gaskets weren't marked, but it's pretty easy with the layout of the holes. So these dimples are in here, there and there. Pins. Ha ha, bam. Okay, let's get this head on here. So the elongated ports are to the bottom. Get this one white too. This thing is really yucky. I mean, really yucky. And I don't know, I hate to say it's a testament to Subaru, but it's probably a testament to Subaru. Right? I mean, it's a very durable engine. So, 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 so. Yep, I knew it. I freaking knew it. Somebody was in here before, and you can see that these have no dimple like that. Well, these go in the center. Then we'll put them in this nice clean quart of. I'm using engine oil to lubricate the threads. It works good. I could have put assembly lube on there, but this is a little bit finer oil, so it'll help with the uh, lubrication of the threads. That's how you do it. 22 foot pounds, 51 foot pounds. Loosen them all 180, loosen them another 180. Torque the center two to 25, torque the outer four to 11. Tighten them all 90 and then tighten them all 90. My kid wrote this down and we use it all the time. My big Armstrong torque wrench. I got this at Precision Metrology in Milwaukee. It was at auction at a rail yard and I got it for 50 bucks and uh, the thing is in good shape the last cal well its due date was 2018 all right so we're gonna go one two three four five six and our first is 22 that's kind of light for this big dog all right all right this is a this is a big dog so this one is good for way up there Two. Twenty-two, so we're doing them all to twenty-two. Now we're gonna go up to fifty-one foot pounds. It's a little bit easier keeping track of six head bolts than it is keeping track of fifteen head bolts on an LS engine. Now we loosen them all one hundred and eighty degrees. I don't really understand why they want them all loosened back up, but I just did it. Okay, now they want another 180. So now we're gonna go, now we're gonna torque the center two to 25 foot pounds. The center two, 25 foot pounds. Okay, here we go. These guys go to 11 foot pounds.
Now we tighten everything 90 degrees. So we're gonna go 90 degrees. So let's go. Uh, where am I gonna park them? Let's go from here. So we're gonna go 90 degrees. Okay, so to me. Ready? Number one. 90. Now we're gonna go another 90 degrees. So this is gonna go 90. Wow, oh, yeah, we're we're putting some snort to her. I'll put a link in the description below for that head gasket kit. It came with the valve cover gaskets, the head gaskets, thermostat gasket. It also came with a water pump gasket. The beauty of that camera, now I can go back and make sure that that was my last round at 90. So I'm going through the same cleaning process, making sure everything is clean. There's no debris that's going to be kind of holding up the head gasket. that for? Ah, I know what that's for. Duh. Once I verify and make certain that I have the head gasket on properly, I'm just going to lay the head on and do the same process as the other side. Lubricate the hardware and then go through the torquing process. Just laying in the windage pan and the pickup tube, making sure the O-ring is seated and in good shape, and then bolting everything down. Ho, 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 ho. Don't lose that in there. Wow. That magnet on stick came in handy again. The problem would have been had I dropped the bolt down there, I would have had to fish it out somehow because it's open right straight down to the crank. I didn't put any torque value on the windage tray or on the pickup tube. I just made it tight. And here I am just going around making darn sure that that surface is clean and ready to accept that gasket RTV or Permatex for that pan. Oil pan gasket leaks are the worst. And what's next garage was here. big bead on there because that oil pan is so flimsy flamsy I just wish I had a, a nozzle dispenser because I use my nozzle dispenser and now I don't I had to buy some more they actually sell spare nozzle or more nozzles so I bought some but there won't be here for this project 
I'll link these nozzles in the description below. They're very nice as soon as I get an opportunity to use them. I'm just going around making sure I have a nice tall bead. I'm not concerned about any Permatex squishing out. Everything down there is not critical if a little bit of Permatex squishes out of the outsides. And again, I'm just going around making sure they're tight. I did not assign a torque value to these. I probably have them tightened up to about 20 to 25 foot pounds. Now here we're cleaning up, getting ready for the valve cover gasket and the valve cover. Those little rubber gaskets are to keep the oil from getting into the spark plug tube. So I put a little bit of oil on them just so when they compress, it compresses and slips a little bit easier. Okay, so that's gotta be long. And then these back ones are short. Oh, they throw a curveball at me. Or I should have just paid attention. Okay, so this is long. So long, long. This one probably needs to be short. So I have two long ones left. Yep, this is, so these two are the only long ones and then these are shorts. It took me a little bit, but I did figure out Two longs and three shorts on both sides. Five foot pounds times twelve. This is Sixty inch pounds. We're gonna go a little more than sixty. We'll go seven. And we'll start the center. And then work out. Well, we're gonna go 60, because I think that's a pretty that's pretty high. 60. Ooh, that's a lot. Well, it's five foot pounds. Yeah, that's Five times 12 is 60. Jeez, that's kind of tight. Tighter than I thought. Oh, there it is. Then we just flip it over and do the same process to the other side. Alright, so I'm using a two millimeter Allen wrench and I'm bringing this vise in really slow. 
you definitely have to bring it in slow because you're compressing that hydraulic cylinder inside there and you don't want to damage anything internal. So sometimes you have to loosen it up, but there it is. I'm gonna have to slide this Allen wrench back, so it's gonna bolt up like this, so that that's gotta push back, and then we can just bring it. I'm gonna put that in the vise again, and just bring that guy back a little bit. Perfect. So there are, I was wrong, there's a timing mark there, and then the other timing mark is right there on that, I, I, it's gotta be a position sensor or something, but the mark is right there. So we're just tapping that main gear onto the shaft there. It wasn't really that hard. It's just a little burr I put on there. Now I know for a fact that my heads, the valves are all the way fully closed. So I am in no danger of ruining anything by turning it. Open it around. We're looking, I'm gonna put a little, a little red right there. Right there. I'll probably end up rotating this a thousand times before I um, I have to go find a water pump. I don't know where to put it. And uh, I don't think I'm gonna replace that gasket. So that gasket, it looks good, right? I mean, it's obviously it's not new, but it's uh, not all tore up. And it's only, it's not even that old. So we're gonna just run with this. If it does happen to leak, I will just bring everybody back and show them this part where I said that that was good enough. I'm just, uh, I'm just running them in tight. Tell you that I can get with this little ratchet. I'm sure I could strip them out if I tried. Those are probably at around 30, 35. Probably, it probably only wanted 20 or something, or even like 12. That spins, oh yeah, that spins freely. Well, I think that's gonna do it for this episode of What's Next Garage. Make sure to check the links in the description below for the head gasket kit and the Permatex nozzles. Next episode, we'll be getting the timing done. We'll be putting on the coolant crossover pipe, putting the intake on, getting the motor ready to install back in the car. That's gonna do it for this episode. As always, have a great day.